comic tonight. I have Watch never seen it before, so I'm kind of excited. Oh, yeah, yeah. Although I'm tempering my excitement. You should. I should. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. I'm always happy to see a brand new comic. So let's see what he's got, everybody. The man with the amazing shirt. It's Jason, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jason. Woo, What's going on? So it's going to be brought by the Douglas in six months. Yay for returning comedy. <laughs> I spent eight years of my life semi-serving my country in the Air Force. And I have to say that civilians say a lot of weird stuff to veterans. They'll walk up to you and they'll say, thank you for your service. And I don't know what to say. So I awkwardly look at them and I'm like, no, thank you for paying for me to live in Germany for three years, sending me to Iraq to play Call of Duty when mortars made it more realistic in the free health care and the free education. <laughs> Joke's on you, I would have paid you guys for that. <laughs> or they'll say things to me like, oh, you serve? That's cool. I almost served. Yeah, I went and talked to a recruiter, but you know, I just decided that going to school and going $100,000 in debt for a gender studies degree so I could make artisanal goat cheese in my basement was objectively a better life choice. And I just look at him and I'm like, cool, but that's not almost serving. Almost serving is going to a recruiter and finding out that you have a medical disability that precludes you from service. Or you join the Coast Guard, that's almost serving. If there's any Coasties at the bar, don't get mad, I'll buy you a beer. You can make fun of the Air Force, call it the Chair Force, and we'll both just laugh about how we were smart enough that we didn't have to join the Marines or Army. <laughs> or somebody comes up to me and they'll say, hey man, how do you feel about gay people serving openly in the military? And I tell them I support it, and they get surprised. And I'm like, look, what you don't understand is you can go into the military 100% straight, but you're coming out at least 1% gay. <laughs> I came out 10% gay because of an incident in basic training. I was, I was in the showers and you know I'm showering. I'm a fuck up. I'm just thinking, don't be late to formation again. I hate getting yelled at and doing push-ups. And I lost my situational awareness and my attention to detail. And when I, I turned around to rinse off in the shower, my dick cross swords with another guy's soapy wet dick and I became 10% gay because that's the rule. Don't get mad at me, your dick touches another dude's dick, you're 10% gay. And I'm sitting in the shower and I'm like washing myself I'm like, fuck, how do I tell my family I'm 10% gay now? It's the old saying, give the military a boy and they give you back a man that's 1% gay. And I'm like sitting there and things start to cook in my brain and I start thinking things that I've never thought before. And I'm like, well, what if I was in a firefight in Afghanistan and I got injured like a bee stung in me or something and I couldn't go, I'm not that tough. There's a reason why I became a generator mechanic. I'm not fucking trying out for special forces, fuck that. So I'm looking around at all the guys in there and I'm like, it just begs the question, which one of these wet naked guys that's been doing PT all day would I want to save me in that situation? And I'm looking around and I'm like, oh, that dude trying out for special forces, he looks like Chris Helmsworth. Now, when you're in the showers in basic training, you picture who you want saving you, but I'm a Thor man. And it just occurs to me, what if he did just throw off his shirt and rip his pants away and he's got an American flag speedo on? I don't know why that. It's just best not to question how another man freedoms. And he just reaches down and picks me up and puts me on his perfectly sculpted shoulders like a baby lamb. And then he uses his, his, his thighs from hundreds of squat thrusts to just start running me towards the medevac zone. And he's just gunning down insurgents one-handed, dropping 80s one-liners. And I'm like, dude, you're bleeding. And he goes, I ain't got time to bleed. I'm like, did you just pull off a fucking Predator reference in combat? That is fucking sick. And he stops at the last insurgent and gives him an old school halo teabagging. So that insurgent, all he sees is a big red, white, and blue nutsack before he meets 
his maker in the afterlife, and as he comes into the medevac zone, he holds me out and starts high-stepping like he's in the Super Bowl, runs up to the gurney, and then just spikes me on it like a game-winning <laughs> touchdown. And you're just, you're stuck with it. You, I'm like, if a guy did that and he was gay, and yes, I have to at least consider sucking his dick and be unpatriotic and homophobic not to. <laughs> Maybe even play a game of massage the prostate. And then it dawns on me. I'm way to formation again, and I'm way closer to 20% gay. <laughs> Another thing, people say that's really weird to veterans, they'll be like, dude, I, I gotta give you credit, man. If some guy came up to me and just started yelling in my face, I just hit the guy. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> It's fucking terrifying. They surround you and yell at you. It's the scariest shit in your life. You have a lot of illusions about yourself. I had a lot of illusions before I joined the military. One of which was that I was an actual man. And then I realized when I deployed to Iraq and made eye contact with a Navy SEAL that this is what a domestic dog, a golden retriever sees when it meets a wolf. <laughs> we may be the same species, but we are not the same thing, and I'll go ahead and sit down to pee when the sky is around. True story, it was actually a, a pair of rescue men, but you guys don't know what that is. It's our fucking badasses, they were. Sort of though, you know, Another thing that happens in basic training is, you know, they're teaching you to hit a good salute, and like, this is a good salute, and European militaries, a lot of times, they, they salute like this, and, you know, you'll have guys with a lazy salute, and the drill instructor will come up to you, and they'll be like, do you serve in the European military? Because last time I checked, Americans sir, salute like this because... We've never lost a war, and that is the absolute worst time ever to bring up Vietnam. <laughs> if you served in Vietnam, hey, I, I feel for you, I served in Iraq. That wasn't like a fucking outstanding success there. All right, one more military joke and we'll do some other stuff. So uh, I love military history, and I was reading this article about Hadrian's Wall. If you don't know what Hadrian's Wall is, the Romans built it to keep the Scots, because you redheads are so fucking badass, from invading Lower England. You know, I've been to Scotland. You don't want to start a fight there. They, they just don't. But as they were excavating it, they came across this stone. And this stone had a dick drawn on it. And the historian was saying that Roman soldiers would draw a dick on things for good luck. And I was like, again, not an expert on ancient Roman culture, but uh, serving in Iraq and seeing the tsunami of cocks drawn on every surface over there, some of which may have been drawn by me, but this is an American vandal and we're not trying to figure out who drew said dicks. I'd say it's much more likely that 18 to 25 year old guys just like drawing dicks on things. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I, I go to my doctor, and it's always like, hey, Jay, how much are you drinking? I'm like, I lie. Uh, I'm like, in one sitting, she's like, yeah, I go, five beers. And she goes, that's binge drinking. And I said, no, it isn't. She's like, no, that's the definition of binge drinking. I'm like, yeah, written by teetotalists. It's not binge drinking. And then she's like, well, what, what would you call it? I go, it's not a binge if you do it every day. Then it's a habit. And she goes, do you really think you should be joking about this? 
I mean, right here in your medical file, it says you have alcohol use disorder and cannabis use disorder. And I go, oh, behold the ravages of my disorder. It's fucking killing me. I'm so miserable. And, you know, the sheriff's department, I'll do this one, and then I'll do one more, and I'll get out of here. The sheriff's department has this thing called drug take back day, where they take your drugs, and they dispose of them for you. And that was always just baffling to me, because I always thought, why would I give you my drugs to destroy? Why wouldn't I save them and take them later recreationally? They rub the bottle off and open it up. Ooh, it's Percocet. Or, I don't know, just give them to a homeless guy. He's homeless. He needs drugs. <laughs> or have a neighborhood block party where you exchange your drugs for new and more interesting drugs with your neighbor. Like, hey man, I'll give you two Ambien for those uh, three Xanax over there in the Percocet. Ambien, for some reason, is really difficult to come across. Or, I don't know, you can give your drugs to me in the parking lot after this show. So, uh, what would this be without a quarantine joke? So, I, uh, I've been, you know, quarantine, quarantine, and doing one of my favorite things in the world, you know, besides paying hookers to spit in my mouth, or paying a hooker to choke me while I beat off. You really want to, you really want to get a transsexual prostitute when you do that. They got way stronger hands. I mean, they can say that they're a girl, but they still got man hand strength there. But I've been playing video games, and you know. Two of my favorite video games are Fallout and Grand Theft Auto. And I just sit around and regular life's boring and I wish I had GTA cheat codes. Friday night, see a cop car still running, hop in it, turn off that wanted level, throw on invincibility, hit one of those car carriers for a just sick jump, smash it up. You're stuck in traffic, spawn a tank, go on a fucking five-star rampage to get the heart rate up before you walk into work. Spawn a girlfriend, because girls don't want to date 42-year-old guys that play video games. Take her on a date in the helicopter I stole. Get out in the parking lot in Walmart. And some other fucker hasn't put in the cart back at the collection point. Scroll through my weapons list. I'm taking this motherfucker out. Molotov cocktail. Too rude, too rude. This doesn't send the right message. RPG. Eh, too much collateral damage. I'm going to let him get away. Sniper rifle sends the right message. Precision. No casualties. And he's done. And he's learned to put his fucking cart back. When you're in the parking lot at Walmart. It's not that hard. It's like... Right over there. It's like 25 feet. You can fucking make it. You're not going to die of exhaustion. Or get some RPG powers. Level my sneak skill up to 99 so I get like, a, like an eyeball if somebody's looking at me. Do it in front of me. Buying lottery tickets. I'm trying to gas up and go on a rampage in my tank before work. And this motherfucker's sitting there going... Uh, let me get a 14, and, you know, I lost on 17 last time. I'm really sorry, man. Yeah, because I have places to be, because I'm a productive member of society. Get your fucking lottery tickets and get the fuck out of my way. Follow him out into the parking lot in sneak mode. Steal his lottery tickets and put a grenade in there. And run off as he blows up. All right, guys, that's been my time. Thank you for your service.